Happy Sabbath, everyone. A happy day. Yeah, we thank the Lord for his merciful to give us this opportunity to come together as a people to start our Sabbath. And uh, I hope every one of us is, is happy to receive the Sabbath. And uh, our God is good. We can work, we can think, we can do everything, but he, he knew that we will need to have a rest too. And uh, to put our mind fixed with the, our God and uh, talk to him. And I hope uh, the hours we have in front of us for the Sabbath, we will have our hearts and our mind mind to talk with the with the our God. Now, as the uh, brother say, we are going to talk about uh, the Sabbath that's fulfilled. I would like to read in uh, Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 and 10. Here it says, And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. <coughs> and the dragon fought and his angels, and they prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. Verse 10. And I heard loud the voice saying in heaven, now is came salvation and the strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuse them before our God day and the night. Dear brethren, here we can see how uh, the Bible telling us that in heaven was the rejoicing. They were so happy because Satan was casting down who was choosing the brethren day and the night. This is showing us even Satan in heaven was not resting. Day and the night, he has a work to do, accusing the brethren, accusing angels. Every day, he's thinking, is doing for that he may get how he can choose other pharaoh angels. Now, when he cast it down, then the angels in heaven, they were so happy to see that now it's a peace, no more war. But the problem, the war come in this walk. Because he had said, the voices say, now in the earth you have a problem. Because he's coming there. Now, when this devil came in this world, what the most important the world needs? In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Looking into Jesus, all than the finish of our faith, for who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, brethren, here we can see how... Um, Jesus 
when he came to save the world, we can see it was a war between the good and the bad. But he had said, for Jesus, with the joy, fighting with the joy. Uh, myself, I have, I have born in the area where there is a, all the time war. Even I was born in the refugee country, not in my country. Even if my country, they were war. But even the place where my parents were escaped, there was a war too. And I know how the war is, but I never see anyone who going to the war with a joy. Always you found they are angry, right? But here Jesus, when he came in this world to fight, to give salvation to the people, he has a joy. Why? Because Jesus was looking in the future. It said, who for the joy that was set before him. Then because of looking in front, how he's going to see it and uh, get the happiness with his father. He didn't have any shame about the cross. He knew that with this, with this cross, he's going to gain the people, to gain the souls, and he's going to take this soul to his father. And for that, he didn't have any problem. He rejoiced and go to the cross. He didn't think about the shame. Now, uh, we are reading in the book of uh, Lift Him Up. It says, every human being acts a party in this conflict. No one can stand on neutral ground. Men must either accept or reject the world redeemer. Or are witnesses either for against Christ, against Christ. Christ calls upon those who stand under his banner to engage in the conflict with him as a faithful soldiers that they may inherit the crown of life. They have been adop adopted as the sons and the daughter of God. Now, brethren, here it say, among of this world, no one can be in neutral area. There is only two ways. To against Jesus Christ, or to receive Jesus Christ. Now, I think for us we are so happy because we have been set ourselves on the side of Jesus Christ to fight. Because he had said in this conflict, in this war, you have to be in one side. There will be no neutral. We need then to fight, but with the rejoice. Why? Sometimes, because of uh, temptations, because of problems we are facing on the way, sometimes we become to be discouraged. But why we become to be discouraged? Because our eyes are not looking before. If we open our minds, spiritual minds, and they see how we are going to sit with Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ is fighting the city behind of his father, what did he say for us? 
He said, I'm going, but I will come back. To do what? To take us to sit with him. Because he said, where I am, that you shall be. Sometimes we read the Bible, and it's come like he always is. We are reading, and we know that. But if we, we can read and uh, try to understand how this happiness will be, brethren, I think no one will be discouraged. No one will fight with the angriness, but we will be happy. Even anything we can meet, we will be happy. Okay, we have some, some witness that they have do. In Timothy 4, 6 and 7, it says, For I am now ready to be uh, feared, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fight a good fight, uh, a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. This is Apostle Paul. When he know that he's in, in a prison, and when he knew that he's not going to be released in, he, in this prison, when he, his friend, because Jesus said, I'm your friend. Jesus, when he showed him what he's going to get, he wrote to his friend, say that, I have fight. And I have finished my course. Brethren, every one of us have the course. I have the course. You have the course. The question is this. How will you finish your course? How? As we read in Hebrews, say we need to look to Jesus Christ. Because for the joy, he fights good fight. The same as a Paul. The same like for us even. If we fix our eyes to Jesus Christ, it's easy. Now, but we have to think one thing. When someone go to the war to fight, what he need to do? First of all, he need to account who I'm going to fight with. Which kind of weapons he has. And if you know that your enemy has the has the power more than you have. Can you go to fight with him? It's not easy. I remember when I was still a child, living in our areas, one day I was quarreling with my, my fellow brother, and he told me that if you do this again, I will beat you. And I told him, you, you cannot. And the other people who were behind me, they say, ah, they knew that he going to beat me. And even myself, I knew that this guy, he will beat me. Because he was very strong more than me. But because I saw somehow people, you know, they they. They make me like he, I gonna fight with him, then I went to fight with him. But I knew that he gonna beat me. And sure, he beat me. But when he, because he take me down and beat me, but I was looking some around, the people are laughing, I was thinking, what does, they, that they don't see that I'm gonna die? Waiting for them to come to help me, but they didn't come. Until one old man passed there, and he, he helped me to, you know, 
Now, brethren, when you go to fight with someone, you need to make sure that you have the power more than him. Now, everyone knows that uh, we are fighting with the Satan. But the question we have to ask ourselves is this. Do we have the power to fight with him? Uh, one day I was talking with someone in my country and uh, I was talking how, you know, we are fighting with the Satan. Sometimes you go down. So, and they told me, Brother Bosco, look, you know Satan, many times Satan is so busy. But if he is not busy and they come to you without looking the other, you cannot fight with him. But because he's busy all the time with, you know, many things in this world, he wants to destroy this, he's going into politics, then he's busy. That's why some people are passing through this way and they get salvation. But if he come to you, he engages that I'm coming to you, be sure you will not fight with him. But is it true? For us and the Satan, who has the power? In Second uh, Corinthians, chapter two, verse eleven, say, "Lest the Satan should get an adv uh, advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices." Then according to this verse says that we know how Satan is. When you go to fight someone and you know him, I think it's easy. Then for us, we know. We know how he is and we know him. In James, chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist and, uh, the devil, and uh, he will free from you. Now, according to this verse, who has the power? Who has the power? For us. Because if we submit ourselves to God, what Satan will do? He will run away. Now, that's why we don't have to afraid anything. Because some sometimes we think Satan is very, very strong for the people of God. But he is not. The person who you got to fight and he's going to run away free from you, he doesn't have the power. What we want to do only is one, to submit our heart to to God. Brethren, we know in this world, yes, we are. We have the all, but uh, we have also the victory. In John 16, 32, it said, Behold, the hour comes. Yeah, is now came that you, you shall be scattered every man to his own. And they shall leave me alone, and yet I'm not alone, because the Father is with me. When Jesus he was with his disciples, he knew that his disciples, they are going to scatter, to run away, to afraid. But Jesus says, I'm not alone. Brethren, sometimes we meet different temptations. When we meet these temptations, even if you are in the church, you are with your brethren, everywhere you can be, sometimes you think you are alone. When you are 
you fight when you are in the right way, you have the people, even they can hate you. Even they can think you different how you are. Then you think, why am I alone? But you are not alone. Jesus said, I'm with my father. Sometimes we need to be, we, we want to be Christian because we have surrounding people. Sometimes we are, we have the power or we fear to continue because we are many people. But as long as you are many or you are own, you need to be with the Father. We need to submit ourselves to God. And if we are with Jesus Christ, we are not alone. John 16.32 those, th those things I have spoken into you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tri mm, tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. Here Jesus say that in this world you can meet many problems, many temptations. And in this world, you will not have a peace. But Jesus said, be in good courage, because I have overcome the world. That is why, brethren, yes, there is a war in this world, but we are a winner. Because we are fighting with someone who already win and is going to give us the power for that we may overcome. That is my wish to every one of us when we are starting the Sabbath. In Jesus' name, amen.